Hello everyone. Uh, today I have a very interesting and fantastic story to share. Nigina's story. Nigina is 18 years old and she is the eldest daughter in her family. Her parents are both graduates of a university in Dushanbe, Tajikistan. As all, she wanted to complete a school and then she wants to aim for a better future. Nigina is a shy, reserved. Her comments do not come that much easy, nor does her sharings. It only comes in a vignette, and it only comes by asking her little, little questions. COVID-19 epidemic. It was March 13 when school closed. The quarantine time supposed to last for two weeks. As the circumstances were getting worse, the quarantine got extended too. We did not have any classes lessons because our school was not ready for online teaching. So we tried to entertain ourselves the best we could. After a few weeks, many exchange students were sent home because of the virus. Their countries agreed that it is safer for them to be home with their families. Flex program promised us students to find a flight home as soon as possible if we agreed to return. However, at that time the airports were stuffed with people and it was very dangerous. So we were in self-isolation with our host families for more than a month waiting for any updates from Flex. In addition, Tajikistan borders got closed so we could not get, go back to commercial flights unless our government sent charter flights. At last, I've got informed about our return home. It was not a commercial flight though. The US government was delivering medical supplies to Tajikistan. Tajik embassy was aware of the flight and asked the US government if they could take the flag students and other Tajik citizens home. All students arrived in Washington, D.C. I flew from Detroit to D.C. with seven people on board. Volunteers of American Council were waiting for us at the airport. The plane was departing the U.S. at 10 p.m. It was about 1 to 2 p.m. so we got to hotel and had a lunch and returned to airport later. We met the other students who just arrived so now we are 39. The plane was so huge with few tiny windows. It was a cargo plane. It looked so scary, to be honest. I got in and even got into tears. There were other citizens on board. The flight took about 16 hours with only one refuel stop in Frankfurt, Germany. We arrived in Dushanbe at 1, 1 to 2 a.m. We stayed in Guliston Hotel, Dushanbe, Tajikistan. There were two students in a room. We wear masks all the time. The meals are provided by the hotel. The rest of the story was in the form of questions between me and her, such as, are you relaxed in terms of being home? The reply is yes, but still nervous about what's going to happen after. Is the meal free or do you pay for the meal? It's free and all the trouble was free. How was the hotel? I asked her via WhatsApp messages. Oh, they are taking very good care of us. Hotel gives and provides hand sanitizers every time. As we enter, they check our temperature. Cleaning rooms. How many days are you instructed to stay in a hotel? 14 days. How are you? Honestly, it is not bad. I have friends, so we are not bored. No food or other things can be brought from outside. So how many are you now? I asked her. She replied, we were all Tajik citizens in a plane. Plane had a 60 passengers. Yes, all Tajiks with me. They were all speaking good English. Morning we have boiled eggs and a good, very good breakfast. The hotel is checking our temperature with temperature devices. How are you today? I ask her again, following the next fourth day. I'm good, but I'm fasting. 
and here I felt that I have to tell her if she has to take a water, if she is dehydrated, if she is not, then she can continue with her belief system. Doctors are not visible around. What about the relatives, I asked her, if they are allowed to come in to the hotel? And she said no, nobody is allowed to come inside. To share her story, I asked the permission from her, I asked permission from her parents, if I can share it today. So as of now recording this video, Negina is safe, happy and she is with her family and all her friends who stayed in Gulistan Hotel. The essence of this story is in people. I call them connectors of hope. Connectors for the cause of a good. Fighters for hope. The essence of this story is in cooperation of FLEX program, USA government, those that are responsible for the programs and their roles. Even though in US grounds, people are still struggling and they're going through the difficult times. They had a choice not to. The essence of the story is in helping. US plane arrived with help, helping with medicine to Tajikistan. They had a choice not to. The essence of the story is the American Council volunteers who worked and meet the student in airport, meet and greet, and to connect. The essence of this story is the Tajik government, the Tajik embassy, who worked to request to bring the citizens back and finding routes and possibilities. They had a choice not to. The essence of this story is the pilot, the pilot who flew the cargo plane 16 hours and again refueled it and again took off the plane. He, had, he was just doing his job. I wonder if he had a 1,000 miles of a good karma to earn. The essence of the story is the hotel workers in Frankfurt that still were providing coffee and tea for passengers inbound or outbound. I even wonder if anyone of out, outbound or inbound passengers would even meet them. But these are the connectors of hope. The essence of this story is Gulistan Hotel in Tajikistan. That the hotel workers, those who check the temperature, and those who clean the rooms, and those who make the meal, and those who clean, and those who serve, working diligently. The essence of this story is the connectors, the connectors of hope, and thank you to all.